All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Chris Crenshaw, and we are live from the 704 once again for episode 215 of the 815 Exchange. And well, 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 all right, we got some things that happen in college football that we need to attend to. We've got UFC Noche. We've got the NFL. And I'm sure uh, plenty of y'all want to see me crash out on the Cowboys, so I guess I have to deliver that, um, or at least something of that in some type of capacity. So yeah, we got plenty to talk about, some stuff in entertainment as well, and of course, some young phenoms stepping up to the plate and racing to talk about in the roundup. But yes, as always, remember to like, share, subscribe, you guys enjoying the content, and as always, everything, and I mean everything. You are looking for it in this life can be found in my description. Social media, if you want to follow me there, see my daily life, in my description. Timestamps. This is long form content. I understand it. Skip to what you want to see. All right. Also in the description, also is always embedded in the video. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited about this one. All right. Very excited. Um, so let's get this underway. All right. Let's get this underway. Normally, you know, I, you know, we got to split the football. So of course they're going to do, you know, the anchors, but we will get to combat sports. Don't worry. I know that's usually the number one, but we are doing two FB to kick us off because boy, oh boy, oh boy. So we started off on a Thursday, all right? We started off on Thursday. I think it was Thursday, right? It was either Thursday or Friday. I believe it was Thursday, though. Um, Kansas State taking on Arizona early. Two very, I mean, two of the dark horse teams, I think, in college football. Um, teams that identified very early on or in preseason um, with very talented young quarterbacks um, and weapons galore. How would that go down? And Well, ladies and gentlemen, um... Noah Fafita had a nightmare. Noah Fafita had a nightmare, and so did Arizona. The battle of the Wildcats goes to the boys in Manhattan. Yes, K-State gets it done 31-7. Avery Johnson goes 14 for 23, 266 total, 100 passing, 100 rushing, two touchdowns. Now, listen, T-Max still did his thing. Don't you worry about it. 11 receptions, 138 for the monster himself. But it wasn't enough. Fafita had a, a very rare, I will say, off game, or at least in a very long time. One of the worst games I've seen Noah play since he really took over and started at Arizona. He just got to have it, which, of course, credit to the Kansas State defense. But for some reason, it just it didn't feel like Fafita had it. Um, T-Mac was T-Mac. But besides that, they just could not get it going. And K-State played a great game. Avery Johnson is an enigma sometimes, all right? If he has to sit in the pocket and just, like, make a normal throw, then it seems like he might sell it. He'll show off the fact that, you know, he's a 19-year-old quarterback, you know, in his second season, really finally getting his feet wet. But if it's on the move or something, he makes the hard plays look easy and makes the easy plays look hard, in a sense. You can see all the promise, all of the hype of why, you know, the highest recruit, highest rated recruit in Kansas State history or since, you know, for a very, very long time. You can see why he has all that hype behind him, but you can also see, like, he's still a very young quarterback. But he still played a very, very good game, take nothing away. Um, Dylan Edwards continues to be dynamite. I right, Whether he's got that Colorado jersey or now in this Kansas State jersey, he continues to be dynamite. I believe he had a punt return for a touchdown in this game. But yeah, K-State gets it done, 31-7. Arizona, I think they'll be fine. But yeah, K-State makes a statement here um, early on in Big 12 play. LSU and South Carolina. This was where college game day went. I was very shocked about that, but this is where they went. All right, so we had LSU and South Carolina. And, and South Carolina had this in the palm of their hands. By the way, this was a four-hour game, which is ridiculous, okay? The last, like, let's just say the entire fourth quarter of this game was torture to watch with the commercials and the flags and just LSU getting so many breaks. It was bad, all right? It was just bad. It was bad football. It was really, really bad football, not necessarily because of the play, but because of everything else like that was affecting it. So that wasn't great to watch. But LSU escapes Columbia 36 to 33. Um, yeah, Williams got it with one minute and 12 seconds, got the two yarder in. And yeah, honestly, that came off of the back of Nuss, who didn't play the best game, showed some of the promise, but also made far too many mistakes and honestly folded under pressure. Gave up a pick six that got called back for a will a, a very strange roughing the passer. Um even though it was on a pick, I, I don't understand that call. Interesting call, but yeah. Give up a pick six that really should have gave the game away, but instead it gets called back. LSU gets, you know, a second chance in life, and they take advantage of it. So, you know, credit where credit's due. But for the vast majority of this game, we were talking about, yo, is Brian Kelly going to get fired? I, I think I, tweet, I texted the group chat back. Brian Kelly's going to get fired at halftime. He's going to get tarmacked in Columbia. Because that's how bad LSU was playing. 
I mean, we're getting cooked, scorched earth on Twitter. I mean, the toughness of this team, the heart of this team. I mean, just getting butchered. But again, end of the day, they found a way. Um, Caden Durham, of course, John Emery went down, unfortunately, in game one. So Caden Durham, the freshman from Duncanville, very highly regarded recruit, showed why he was that 98 yards and two touchdowns in his breakout game. Uh, Lacey and Mason Taylor continue to be weapons um, for that LSU offense. They both had a touchdown in this game. Brandon Swinson had three sacks, but yeah, it just was not great. Um, Sellers went down for you know South Carolina. That was another big hit. He was not great through the air, but he could run the ball. Boy, could he run the ball. Rocket Sanders also had a fantastic game, 143 and two touchdowns. He's been a dog since his Arkansas days. He is still a dog here in South Carolina. But yeah, this is definitely one of those games, man, where, you know, Beamer Ball is working. It, it feels like South Carolina, in a sense, got robbed here. It, it definitely does feel like that, and it's definitely going to be one of those games that Scar's going to look back and think, you know, we should have walked out with the win here. We should have got that upset, but just couldn't finish the job, man. Just couldn't finish the job at the end. Of course, some of that's just unlucky and unfair, but, you know, that's football. Certain situations earlier in the game, you can say that, you know, if they'd have capitalized on, wouldn't even put themselves in that situation. So, yeah, unfortunate, but else you does escape, all right? But they haven't looked great, okay? They have not looked great. USC game was a banger, and it was like, all right, maybe USC was just a better team that day. But against Scar, don't really know. Don't really know. So LSU in a very unusual spot, staying with the SEC, which is dominating college football per usual. Um, especially, I guess, in you know, conference realignment. But we'll talk about that. All right, we'll talk about that. But Mizzou and Boston College in one of my games of the week, um, and it lived up to the hype. All right, it lived up to the hype. Boston College, I think they did drop out of the top 25, but they, I, I hope they were still getting votes. I, I didn't check. But they did not lose any stock in this loss. All right, they lost 27 to 21, but they took Mizzou to the brink. They made Mizzou earn this one, okay? Boston College and Thomas Castellanos continue to impress me. I mean, continue. Now, Casta was explosive both ways, okay? 249, three touchdowns, but he also had two picks, all right? So... Give and take there. Um, Brady Cook, let Brady Cook. 20 for, 21 for 30. 254. Two touchdowns. Nate Noel had 121. And of course, Luther Burden. Had to remind y'all. All right, we talking a lot about these freshman receivers. Let me remind y'all who the number one receiver in the country for this coming class is. Um, and he did. There, he definitely did that. Six receptions, 117 and a touchdown for Luther. So yeah, good get back game for him. And he was a big reason why Mizzou. Uh, was able to get it done, had a go-ahead earlier in the game to really shift that momentum, and Mizzou held on, all right? But like I said, Boston College and Bill O'Brien, I think they're heading in the right direction. I don't think they should lose any stock in this loss of anything they gained some by proving, you know, Mizzou, number 16 in the country, we can hang, all right? We can hang at Mizzou. So yeah, very impressive performance from Boston College, but it wasn't enough to knock off the Tigers. Utah was on the brink of death. They weren't the only one. They were there were a couple teams that were on the brink of death. Um, but they were another team that was also bailed out by a great young freshman quarterback. Now we're gonna talk about the one that everybody's been talking about. Well, let's talk about another famous last name in quarterbacking, and that is Wilson. Alright, Zach Wilson did wonders at BYU. Unfortunately for BYU, his little brother, also very good and also was a star at Corner Canyon, decided to go to Utah. And uh, that bailed out Utah, I mean, bailed them out versus Utah State. They get the win 38-21, to but boy, oh boy, was that close. Boy, oh boy, was that close. Isaac finishes with 239, three touchdowns and a pick. Micah Bernard had 123 on the ground and a touchdown. Bryson Barnes, the transfer, had three Yes, the, that Bryson Barnes, that was at Utah, yeah. He had three touchdowns and two picks, but it wasn't enough. Bazon had 115 and nearly, nearly put them in a position to win, but Utah's defense came up big time and got the stop, and Utah was able to stretch that lead following that, and they were able to hold on. But like I said, Isaac Wilson, showing why another highly regarded fr This freshman class is looking very special. I mean, very, very special with these early season performances. They have been thrust into roles where they have to play now, and they have responded very, very well. So I've been very impressed. Isaac was very, very impressive. Showed shades of his brother naturally, and yeah, was able to get Utah on top, and they survived the big rivalry game versus Utah State. Texas. Now, you're probably just wondering, Chris, why isn't just, you know, this in like the roundup of the college football segment, you know? Texas, you know, on paper beat UTSA 56-7, right? They're now the number one team in the country. You know, what's the big deal? Well, Heisman favorite, 
Um, Quinn Ewers, now Heisman favorite Quinn Ewers, got injured in this game. He went down. So that meant that one Archibald Manning, yes, Arch has arrived. And boy, did Arch arrive. He, he, you know, all that talk in his senior season and, and leading up to his recruitment to Texas, all this talk about he's a three-star recruit with a five-star name. Can y'all elaborate on that now for me? Can, can y'all please elaborate? You know, I never understood it then. Because I saw him playing at Newman and saw what he was doing. But I would love to, you know, understand it now. Do y'all still, you know, share that same sentiment after Saturday? Because I don't think it really makes much sense. Because Arch Manning looked every bit the player that Arch Manning is hyped up to be. Now, I get it. It's UTSA. But also, hey, UTSA, even though this is not the Frank Harris teams, they were, what, two, three years ago from playing at New Year's Six Bowls. So, hey. Not the worst team to have a great performance against. But Arch went off. All right, he went off. 9 for 12, 223 yards. He had five touchdowns, including a 67-yard rushing touchdown. That's not Peyton. That's not Eli. That is most definitely Cooper's boy. If he's going for 67 yards and juking people, yeah, that is definitely Cooper's boy. But, yes, they are now calling him Lisa Nagaib, and I would be, you know, inclined to believe it because, um, yeah, Arch looked phenomenal. And I think he's going to have to start this coming week, so we get more Arch action here against, I think, Southern Miss. So, yeah, Quinn out, which is never a good thing, but Arch definitely lit up to the hype against UTSA. He looked great. Ryan Wingo, another true freshman. Three receptions, 127 and a touchdown. Mr. Bond. Five receptions, 103, and two touchdowns, and Jonte Cook also had two. So, yeah, Texas had a, I mean, just had a party. All right, a party in the end zone versus UTSA. But, of course, the big story, Arch has arrived. And like I said, boy, has he. Now, Texas is the number one team in the country, not just because they've been the most impressive team, you know, knocking off Michigan, destroying UTSA, Arch looking like Arch, um, but also because Georgia barely escaped Kentucky yesterday. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you, barely. By the skin of their teeth, 13 to 12. This was not a great game for if you believe in Carson Beck and you believe in this Georgia offense, this is not a great game, okay? It's not a great game. This was also the Brock Vandegrift homecoming game. Um, as Brock, of course, once upon a time was supposed to be the hair at Georgia. Many people thought he would take Carson Beck's job when he was recruited as a five-star coming out of high school. That didn't work out. Brock is now at Kentucky. And unfortunately for Brock, he could not lead his team, but boy, oh boy, was it close. All right, Georgia was trailing for most of this game, was trailing. But Branson Robinson got it in the bucket in the fourth, and, you know, from there they were just able to hold on. That Georgia defense did what Georgia defense does, but uh, that offense looked grim, okay? Credit where credit's due to Kentucky, but, you know, still. For what, you know, Georgia's supposed to be, I mean, you got to win dirty, like I said, like I always say. You got to win flashy. You got to win dirty, and they won dirty here, but, you know, it was definitely not pretty and not one that they're going to want to remember to put on the highlight reel. So, yeah, Georgia survives. They're not the only team this week. Um, Michigan, I'm talking about you. But they do survive, but they do lose that number one spot, and they do set up a really big matchup with Georgia and Texas. But we'll see if they can, you know, both hold on to that Oh, by that time that happens. Other stuff that happened in CFB this week, um, Colorado got redemption against Colorado State. Um, so, yeah, perfect timing, okay? Travis Hunter is a monster. Nothing else needs to be said. Um, Tennessee murdered um, Kent State, Miami murdered Ball State, and Notre Dame murdered Purdue. Polar bear in the Savannah. There is a polar bear in Savannah. Purdue, what are you doing here? But yes, all three of these. Okay, 66, 63, and 71, respectively. Um, just the bombs. Okay, just, just I mean, Notre Dame, first off, was getting some frustration off. I mean, they were getting some frustration off in that game. And then Tennessee and Miami have been mangling everybody, so, you know, credit where credit's due. Alabama also played Wisconsin. Thought we might be talking about that in the main subject, but, you know, um... Yeah, Jalen Milrow and Ryan Williams at 17 years old is looking like a monster. Another true freshman. Um, yeah, they've been near unstoppable so far. Um, not, of course, that they've played crazy comp, but, you know, Wisconsin is Wisconsin. Um, not like prime Wisconsin, but, you know, still Wisconsin. But, uh, yeah, they got mangled too. So, yeah, Bama looking, looking very strong. You know, no saving, but they still got that talent there. You know, Kalen DeBoer is still a very good coach. So, Bama looks all right. Roll, tie. Whoa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for combat sports. And before we talk about Nello, it was, of course, Mexican Independence Weekend. If you didn't know, um, if you're just not around any Mexicans, you, you would have known. You would have known. I mean, that negative connotation, by the way. 
<laughs> Let me get that straight. Um, it was basically like a, another Cinco de Mayo. But USA Noche, huge event for the UFC, third biggest game in combat sports history. Um, the first ever MMA events at the Spear. Yes, at the Spear. At the MGM Grand, not just in Vegas, not the Apex, at the Spear. Um, which was, it was a visual masterpiece. Um, a bit unorthodox, but still really cool venue. Alright, very, very cool venue to, you know, host a fight at. Um, but boy, oh boy, was it the, it was the, the, the night of revenge. Alright, and of course we're starting the main event. Sugar Sean. Would the Sugar Sean era continue? I said last week, and I said in the group chat also, shout out to the boy Zay. He's been here before. Sean does not knock this man out. If he does not catch Marab, I don't like his chances. And boy, oh boy, he didn't catch Marab, and Marab just, just, he mauled him. Okay, he mauled him. It was not pretty. It was not like, he wasn't even like some severe. He just mauled. Like, it's just the, the constant pressure. I'm going to wrestle you down, and then I'm just going to smother you. And that is what happened to Sean O'Malley. Um, and Marab is now champion at Bantamweight. Yes, Marab is now champion. Honestly, I feel like it's a long time coming. Because um, with all due respect to Aljo, because they're boys, um, that's the only reason Marab might have not already been champion. Because um, I feel like he's been number one contender forever. But yeah, no real surprise here as much as I love Sugar. But yeah, Marab mauled him. Okay, just absolutely mauled him. I knew with that pressure, how was Sean going to be able to deal with it? He didn't deal with it well. And you know, that wrestling is different. All right. And again, that's the meta right now um, is these wrestlers, these grinders, is what I like to call them, that just grind these wins out, these unanimous decisions out. But these, you know, strikers that we love, the flash, the knockouts, the, the counter striking styles. They can't, you know, they don't have wrestling credentials to keep up and they get mauled. So, uh, yeah, that's the meta right now. That's the meta. It's the meta. So, that's what happens. But Marab does get it done. Correct to him. Like I said, long time coming. Valentina, Valentina, Valentina. We were going to find out if Valentina Shevchenko, one of the greatest female mixed martial artists to ever live, was washed. Yeah, no, she's not washed. And unfortunately, I know the UFC has been trying so desperately to market Alexia Grasso so, so much. But yeah, it's over. It is all over. Yeah, Val got her get back in full. Okay, got her get back in full. I think she's skunked. Like, Sugar at least, like, took some rounds on the school cards. Alexia got skunked in this. Um, Val was just on a different level. And again, mauled. I mean, very similar to Marab, just mauled Alexa, took her down. I mean, nearly the control numbers are insanity. She essentially had control for three rounds of this fight, which is crazy. And it went the full five. So, yeah, Val looked dominant, not washed in the slightest. Absolutely incredible performance from one of the greatest to ever do it. So, yeah, shout out to V. She's got her title back. She is back on top. Now, a matchup I was very excited about, Diego Lopez versus T-City, a little bit to the hype. Um, two things came out of this, all right? Lopez is ready, all right? He's ready. He's ready. Title contender, title shot. He's ready. He got the UD. But also, T-City is still very much so a zombie. I'm very scared to see what his brain is going to look like in 10 years because um, I feel like his CTFX could be something insane. But... T-City um, didn't look bad necessarily, but Diego definitely showed that he is on that championship level. And T-City is the gatekeeper to the contenders, all right? You want to shot the championship, you got to go through Brian Ortega in this division. And you know what? They did. They did. So, uh, yeah, congrats to Lopez. Flip it up to the hype. But T-City, what's next? I think he should go up to 155 before it's too late. I think he should go up to 155. And see how that goes. Um, because I think 145 is just it's not gonna happen. All right. Respectfully, I just don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think Billy Ilya, he's not beating, you know, he couldn't beat Lopez, you know, Volt is still hanging around, Max went up, you might as well follow him. All right, so yeah, T City, go up, my friend. But yeah, Diego Lopez, dangerous man. Other things that happen in the honestly, all I want to talk about is that Aldana cut, which was vicious. All right, one of the worst cuts I've seen. Um, and Rosas got a win. All right, Raul got a win. So Dana's pet project um, continues to move on. He also did the the thing, you know, ah, uh, I'm a young phenom. I'm right now, I'm retiring at 25. I'm gonna win the championship, and then I'm retiring at 25. That never happens. But you know, you know, nice to see him continue the tradition of uh, a young star saying that. 
But UFC 306, um, again, very good card. Had some good entertainment. However, Uncle Dana was very unhappy about those last two fights. So uh, we will see. I, we will see, but I know he's got to be sick about some of his champions, and I think he is. Now, Boxing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Canelo handpicked this. Let's not, let's not just sugarcoat this. All right, Canelo handpicked this. Okay, Canelo completely handpicked Edgar Berlanga. Now, a long time ago, when Berlanga, you know, was prospect of the year, if you would have told us, hey, Canelo Berlanga in 2024, we'd have been like, oh, yeah, yes, sir. But then, you know, Berlanga got exposed and, you know, he's kept winning, but, you know, he ended up here. And nobody is surprised, all right, Canelo got this UD. All right, nobody. Not, I mean, maybe somebody on Berlanga's team, and maybe Berlanga himself, but nobody was surprised about what happened in this fight. Um, I will say that left hook was vicious. That was vicious in round three. Credit to Berlanga for getting up from it. But that was vicious. That was very pretty. But Canelo just did what Canelo does. All right, of course, it's not prime Canelo, like we've been saying, but still just a little bit better than everybody else. He retains the titles, takes care of Edgar. And yeah, Berlanga looked solid, though. Okay, what credit to do? All right, he didn't get completely just like destroyed in this. Um, he didn't win by. I mean, it wasn't like close, but he looked respectable. You know, he gained some respect in this fight, and uh, you know, only twenty seven. Things can happen in the fight game. Losses are not the end. So maybe in the future, Berlanga does one day live up to that hype. You know, Canelo once upon a time faced uh, Floyd Mayweather as a baby and you saw what happened to him. So maybe that happens for Berlanga. But Canelo does what exactly what we expect and gets it done with the UD. Let's talk entertainment, all right? What another, again, industry, another great episode. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because, you know, I'm not doing it live anymore. But yeah, another great episode. Talked a lot about Rob. Rob and Yaz are desperately in love with each other, but they are just kind of like on different ends, different sides of the coin. Um, her and Muck's relationship, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, that Yaz just keeps attaching herself to these men, but Kit Harrington is doing a great job as Henry Muck. And yeah, industry, um, Eric falling apart. Um, just, it's, it's great. All right, it's great. Another co cool for industry. Let's talk music, though. All right, let's talk music. Keshi, everybody's favorite underground uh, Viet artist is back with the album. All right, we talked about the singles. Now we got the album Requiem. All right, Requiem dropped. Say, which we talked about, still love that. Dream, talked about, still love that. I'm going to add ID and like that to my list of my favorites. I think off a of first listen. Very good album. I'm going to give it an 8.7. All right, I'm going to give it an 8.7. I'm not going to throw it in 9 yet. Um, which would push it to album of the year territory, but I'm gonna give it an 8.7 because I think I, I really enjoyed this project. It was a very, very strong project. He's just got a great voice, man. He's just one of those really good vocalists that, you know, whatever tempo, whatever style that he can express that on, it's it's just gonna hit. It's just gonna hit every single time. So yeah, Keshi did his thing, Requiem, 8.7. Very, very, very good. Staying in that R&B space. Uh, well, Keshi's not completely, but he's, you know, he does some R&B. But Ocean from the Blue Drop, my boy, Moonwalk. Another very good track. Not my favorite of the Ocean singles this year, but still, very good. All right, Moonwalk, co-sign for me. Able dropped. Yes, the album is coming. I forgot what the name of it was already. It has a really weird cover where it's just like his face and people meme the like shadow of a, you know, on it. So that was interesting, but he did drop Dancing with the Flames and it was not my favorite. It was solid because he makes good music, right? You know, sometimes with a great artist, there's a, there's a floor and it's still going to get past that floor, but it's not going to impress you. And Dancing in the Flames really didn't impress me personally. I, I hope it's not the general direction of what the album is going to sound like. I would like something much more, I want to say darker, but I feel like he could do something a little bit darker and it'd be more in vain. But uh, this was very much so heavy synth pop, which I feel like is what he's been on. And I want something just a little different, just a little bit different this time, Abel. Um, I know it's supposed to be the, you know, the next part of the trilogy, but, uh, <laughs> next part of the trilogy, but, um, yeah, I need something a little bit different. Just a little different, just a little different. Not too crazy, but just a little different, Abel. You know, you're my boy, but you need something a little bit different. Dancing in the Flames, though, not bad, all right? It's not bad. All Red, Cardi dropped, finally. All right, not the album, but he finally dropped. So Cardi fans were going crazy. They were losing their minds. But uh, yeah, All Red, he sounded like Future. I was like, yo, I'm rocking with this. But it's because he sounded like Future. But I was still happy to see 
deep voice Cardi or regular voice Cardi because I like that a lot better than baby voice Cardi. I'm not going to lie to you. But it was still a very good, you know, it was a good track. It's good Cardi. But, you know, I'm not sure if I can rock with the upside down across personally. So it might not be in the playlist, but still, it was he. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. It was he. Um, but yeah, he sounded like Future. And I think that's a big reason why I was classifying him as he. But we will see. National Football League, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the National Football League. All right. Um, the Bills won this game, by the way. Before we start talking about it, 31 to 10. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. No, two is done. All right, two is done. He needs to hang it up. I I'm sorry. He needs to hang it up. And what is it about this Dolphins team that it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter what Josh Allen has. It doesn't matter what the Bills have. It could be Josh Allen playing with a bunch of middle schoolers, and I'm not convinced the Miami Dolphins could beat them. It's almost like they're the new version in that division, ironically, of the Jets and the Patriots, where it was like no matter what, during that Brady-Belichick era, the Jets just could not beat the Patriots. They couldn't. And in this era, the Dolphins, for whatever, know how, how talented that team is. Whether they're at home, away, stacked, or not. They cannot beat the Buffalo Bills. They can't. They just cannot do it. All right? Tua gets another concussion in this game, but that was not at, but that was after. All right? 17 for 25, which is not bad. But, oh, boy. 145 with Cheetah and Waddle and all the weapons you had on that team. Oh, that's bad. And he also had three picks. So, yeah, embarrassing performance. But then he gets the concussion, which is great PR for him, honestly. Not that it was a PR move, obviously. But saves him from the slander because everybody's like, yo, he needs to retire. Um, Because he does. He does. That many concussions in this many seasons consecutively is not healthy. It's not healthy. You have a family. Go be a family man. All right. This football thing has come and gone. You're a Bama legend, not necessarily a Dolphin legend, but you are a Bama legend. All right. Enjoy your college football hall of fame. Not, I'm sure, in a couple of years, but you are not that guy. You're just not. All right. Even if he stays, he's not that guy. We have reached that point where I can definitively say to what just doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. He, he's good. Don't get me wrong. He's good. But he's never going to be elite. He's stuck in that abyss. And if the Dolphins want to be something serious, they're not going to do it with Tua. He's not going to win you a Super Bowl. That's that's the uncomfortable truth for Dolphins fans after Thursday night. Not just that Tua needs to retire. Not that just you need a new quarterback. It's that he's just not that guy. He's not. It is what it is. Um, a chain had a player. He played a great game though, you know, so that there, there's some positives, you know, 96 yards rushing 69 receiving with seven receptions as well. Good God. He probably put up that's that's that might be near 30 bomb depending on your fantasy, but uh, yeah, you also had a TD. So he played great, but uh, like I said, man, Toy just doesn't have it and it's, it's doing much worse. It's doing more damage than it is good for the Dolphins at this point. Um, and like I said, he needs to hang it up. James Cook had two touchdowns, led the way for Buffalo when Josh Allen was just doing Josh Allen stuff. And the Bills get the win. They have looked very, very strong. No digs, no problem. Oh, boy. Yep, it's here. It is here. That is literally the next game. Yep, it's here. Y'all want to hear me crash out, so I guess here we got to go. All right? And honestly, I'm here to disappoint. Because once again, I've been a Cowboys fan since I was born, which was 2001, for those that don't know, 23. And I didn't get to see the glory days. The glory days for me were Romo, Witten, and Bryant. That was my glory days. And I guess somewhat of, I guess, technically, currently, that's my glory days. I didn't see the championships. I didn't see Emmett. I didn't see Troy. I didn't see the playmaker. I'm not old enough for Starback. I didn't see any of that. I inherited this fandom, and I fell in love with this team, and it's been nothing but pain. And at a certain point, I got numb to the pain. And you've seen me get numb to the pain over the four years I've been doing this show. So once again, I am here, and it's much earlier than usual, but week two, and boy, oh boy, the pain is here. It is here. Boy, is it here. Of all teams. And I can't tell if the Saints are back or we're just bad. And that's the question I'm left with after we lose 44 to 19 at home. And they nearly dropped all 44 in the first half. 35. 35 points given up in the first half. 
after everything last week about, oh, our defense. Yeah, where was that today? AK-41, 115, three touchdowns. Derek Carr played a phenomenal for He started off 6-for-6, six six, 199, two touchdowns. Perfect. Perfect. Now, he ended up throwing a pick, but he went 243 and two touchdowns because he really didn't have to do that much work after the half because it was over. The game was over. AK-41 was in kill mode. He had four touchdowns in this game because he also had a 57-yarder. But Shahid had a 70-yarder. They were killing us with the big play. Carl Granderson, one and a half sacks. Honey Badger and Adu had two picks of Dak. It was just everything that could go wrong in this game went wrong. Everything. Everything. And just like that, here in week two, all hope I had for this season, not that I really had that much, is gone. Because I'm just like, I don't know what to think about this team. You know, CD Lamb's great. You know, we paid him. But we're getting blown out at home by the Saints. Which then again, maybe Carr is just, he he's he split the, he split the switch. AK-41 never left, but, you know, it was back and forth. Maybe the Saints are good, but... <laughs> For now, I'm, I'm left reeling because I don't know what to think about this Cowboys team. Maybe y'all can help me out. But uh, yeah, very disgusting effort there. Um, just revolting. Nothing but pain. Um, but it could be worse, I guess. It could be worse. It could be worse. Because you know who's sitting beside us right now? Honestly, we might even be a step ahead of them. The Baltimore Ravens are 0-2. Now, last week was excusable. This week, absolutely not. Losing to the Las Vegas Raiders at home is crazy. Somebody explain to me why Garner Minshew was outplaying Lamar Jackson. S somebody. One person explained to me how Minshew was outplaying Lamar. And I'm not going to lie to you. Besides the second half of last week, he's not been great this season. The reigning MVP has not looked very reigning MVP-esque. He's the first reigning MVP, actually, in 22 years to start off 0-2. I'm not saying Harbaugh's seat is on fire yet. But boy, oh boy, something needs to change in Baltimore. 0-2 oh, for a team of supposedly this caliber is unacceptable. All right, it's unacceptable. Minshew cooked. Devontae Adams said, you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Nine receptions, one ten, and a touchdown for one of the best receivers in the game. Max Crosby also said, you, do you understand who I am? Two touchdowns for Max. Or two sacks for Max. Two touchdowns. I mean, honestly, might as well in this game. Derrick Henry um, continues to be an asset. He's scoring a bunch of touchdowns. But, uh, yeah, the Ravens aren't winning a lot of games, which is probably more important. Had five sacks of Minshew, but it didn't matter. In the end, the Raiders are able to get the win late, 26-23. to Baltimore, what's going on? Browns and the Jaguars went down to the wire. All right, went down to the wire. But Trevor just couldn't get it done. All right, he just they, the Jaguars. I'm going to say I'm not going to put this one on Trevor, even though he wasn't great. Honestly, the conditions weren't great in that game, by the way. But, uh, yeah, then the game between the two supposedly franchise Clemson quarterbacks who haven't really looked very franchised lately, um, yeah, the Browns win. Not very pretty, though. <laughs> Not very pretty. Um, but Dustin Hopkins and Cam Little had a hell of a battle. I mean, a hell of a battle. But, yeah, Browns get it done 18-13. to um, And, yeah, Jaguars just couldn't finish the job. They're own 2 they're going to, but for some reason, the Jaguars tend to turn it around for some weird DNA reason. So we'll see, but it ain't looking good in Jacksonville. That's all I'm going to say. All right, the Jets and the Titans. All right, the Jets and the Titans. Which is not a beautiful game. To, honestly, on paper, not a beautiful game. But you know what? The Jets got to win, ladies and gentlemen. So everybody give the New York Jets a clap. Yep. The Aaron Rodgers, the first win of the Aaron Rodgers era of the New York Jets, baby. They got the win, okay? Braylon Allen is an animal, okay? He's an animal, which is not really a surprise because he's been that man since Wisconsin. However, he didn't do the, you know, Wisconsin tradition of, oh, Super Saiyan running back goes for 2,000 yards and ends up being a very high pick. Didn't happen. All right, it didn't happen, but he is still a man-child by all means. Um, He was cooking, all right? He was cooking in this game. Two touchdowns for Braylon. Um, he's also the NFL's youngest player. Um, it feels very reminiscent, which he shouted out, by the way, Ryan Williams um, this past week. But it feels very reminiscent. Um, and now, of course, you're seeing what Ryan's doing at Bama, which is kind of similar to what you know Braylon was doing at running back for Wisconsin and that type of hype. And now Braylon went a little bit lower than I think people thought he would have gone back then. But, uh, yeah, had a big impact on this game. And, of course, that could be a big time steal. Pairing him with Brees Hall, who hasn't been... Off to too hot of a start, all right, to put that very lightly um, in this season. But, yeah, 
Go ahead, winner. With four minutes to go to Braylon. And the Jets, like I said, finally get that win. Vikings take out the 49ers. Yep, this was just a rough, rough week. All right, a rough, rough week for some of your favorites, okay? The Vikings get it done because Sam Donald apparently is back, baby. Fight the f on because Sammy D is back. Sam Darner was back, man. 268, two touchdowns. Jettis had a 97-yarder, which is why he had 133 yards, because he also got injured in this game. So wishing for the best for Jettis. But um, Darnold cooked up. All right, He cooked up completely in this game. Now, on paper for, for the 49ers, Brad Purdy had 319. Mason had 100, filling in for CMC, who was completely blown up my fantasy season. I just knew. I just knew, but I couldn't help it. But I just knew not to pick it. I just knew not to pick him, but uh, he's on IR right now, and uh, I'm not going to say they missed him because they just got outplayed in this game. Debo had 100 yards, but like I said, it did not matter. It did not matter. It did not matter. Purdy had two turnovers, which are very, very costly, and the Vikings were able to get it done, man. Were able to get it done. Got to Purdy six times. Pat Jones had two of those. Cashman had 13 tackles, and like I said, Sam Darnold, he's back. He's back. I'm not even going to dignify the Panthers with a photo. And I'm going to try to keep this short. Because they lost 26-3. to Okay? And uh, it's not even fraud watch at this point. It's like I said. They're going 0-17. So let's keep the counter. 0-2. They're not winning a game. There is no way in hell this football team in its current state wins a football game. Weddington is the best team. The high school. In Charlotte, I'm so serious. The, the Panthers are not winning a, a game, bro. A game. 0-17. Move on. Seahawks and the Pats went to OT, and the Seahawks were able to get it done. Myers with the game winner from 31 yards um, after he had the game tire from 38. So, yeah. Gino and the boys fought. All right, they fought really well. Got to give a shout to Charbonnet. A lot of clutch yards. He didn't. He only had 38 yards rushing. Had a really rough day on the road. I mean, did get a touchdown, but uh, had some really crucial yards late. So credit where credit's due. DK went off in this game. All right, 10 receptions, 129 in the touchdown. He was also jumping over a lot of people. I don't know what DK was on, but yeah, he was on that serum. JSN, by the way, looked like JSN in this game. Finally, 12 receptions, 117 for the former Ohio State product. Leonard Williams had a one and a half sacks of Jacoby Brissett, who actually got banged up in this game, but no Drake. All right, no Drake made in this game, but it didn't matter. Hunter Henry had 8 sons 109, but it was not to be. Seahawks were clutch, made the right plays, they get the win. The Commies, all right, the Commies and the Giants, all right, Austin Seibert got the game winner. Um, this was very much so back and forth between the two teams that sit in the cellar of the NFC East and probably in the cellar of the league. Um, so, yeah, not too great, not too great aesthetically, but um, DJ did not throw a pick this game, you know, week, so credit where credit's due. The Commanders did run the ball very, very well, had 215 total. B-Rob had 133. Jaden Daniels had a very, very solid game and continues to, you know, maybe live up to those rookie of the year hypings. Um, and yeah, like I said, DJ didn't turn the ball over. Malik Neighbors had 10 receptions, 127 and touchdown. But, but it was not enough. All right, the Commanders do get the game winner and they are golden. Speaking of gold, all right, let's talk about that golden green. Okay, the Green Bay Packers with Malik Willis at quarterback are able to beat the Indianapolis Colts because Anthony Richardson still does not know how to play quarterback, and I don't know why I trusted him. Three interceptions for Rich. All right, AR, no no pop plays to be like, oh, but AR can do this. None of that this week. We just got all the bad, all right? All of the bad, all of the rawness. 50% from, you know, 50% completion percentage, a hair over 200 yards, and like I said, three very, very momentum-breaking, costly interceptions in this game for Anthony Richardson. He did not look good in the slightest. And that Packers defense, which we some people have said, would be able to hold it down. You know, with Jordan Love out for a while, Malik Willis don't know how he's going to do. They didn't ask him to do too much. I think it was a very well-coached game. And, uh, yeah, that defense came through big time. And, again, made plays where they had to be made. Xavier McKinney, Evan Williams, and Eric Wilson were the ones that got the picks. And, like I said, AR is just not ready for prime time. Just not ready. The Bucks and the Lions, all right? The Bucks and the Lions, and boy, another another game. We have a lot of games go to either OT or like come down to early that last three minutes. So, and in some ways, good ball, all right? Good ball this week. But Detroit Lions, 
There's going to be no undefeated streak. There's going to be no, none of that's happening. All right, it's not happening this year. Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans, you're 2-0, all right, because they go on the road and get it done 20-16. to uh, Baker Mayfield is still juking people out. He also had the go-ahead touchdown in this game with 34 seconds to go. So, yeah, Baker's still cooking. He had two TDs in this game. They did have one interception, but two TDs. Chris Godwin went off for seven receptions, 117 and a touchdown. But I would be amiss, all right, as great as the Bucks did, you know, getting the win. I would be amiss if I did, I did not mention the real star player in this game, which was Aiden Hutchinson, who had a monster game, four and a half sacks nearly single-handedly won this game for the Lions, but it was just not to be. But I got to give a shout out to Hutch because he was dominant, all right? Absolutely dominant. ARSB also had a really good game, Amon Ra. But uh, Goff throwing two picks. The Bucks just, I mean, they got it right now. I don't know. We, we used to, we, we made fun of a lot of the NFC South last year, but bar, you know, the abomination out of the Carolina Panthers, Saints destroy the Cowboys. Bucks are two and zero. Falcons are the Falcons, but you know overall not too bad. You know not too bad. So yeah, Bucks get it done twenty to sixteen. The destruction doesn't stop there though. This week, you know, I just talked about the Saints. You know what they did to the Cowboys. Yeah, um, the Cardinals it felt like they were exercising some demons. In particular, Marvin Harrison Jr. A lot of talk. I last week, I was on here and I said I didn't even remember if Marv played. That's how little action and how poor his first game was. Now, I don't know if Marv was, you know, charging up or maybe he needed to put fuel in the Maserati because he was unleashed in full effect. And it wasn't like we wait until the second half. No, from the jump in this game, him and Kyler were dialed in. Dialed in. In, all right, Maserati Marv with a monster, four reception, 130, and two touchdowns, basically all in the first half, almost all in the first quarter, honestly, and that was really all she wrote. All right, the Cardinals broke the Rams early, and they could do nothing, all right, could do absolutely nothing. Everybody cooked. Kyler went 17 for 21, 266, three touchdowns due to air. James Conner had 122 and a touchdown. Kyler also had 59 yards on the ground. I need to point that out. But yeah, and of course, I told you, Mar, four receptions, 132 touchdowns. Um, the rookie cooked. Dennis Gardeck, I got to give a shout out to as well. Not quite what Hutch did, but he did have three sacks on the day. And yeah, the Rams just got shut down, man. Only 53 yards rushing. That's not going to win games, especially when Stafford doesn't really do too much either. And yeah, I mean, just dominant from Kyler and Marv and James Conn. I mean, they look like triplets out there. So yeah, Cardinals cooked up, all right? Cooked up. Much better performance from last week. The Steelers and the Broncos played, if you like defense, a very good game. If you like offense, you probably switched the channel very, very fast in this game because um, essentially it was Chris Boswell versus Will Lutz. Um, again, not the prettiest game ever. Bo Nix. Is not making money, you know, many more believers, uh, to say the least. Um, and also, when he's your leading rusher at 25 yards, that's just not going to win football games. It's not going to win football games. So, yeah, the Broncos, uh, not a good start to the season. Steelers, though, are 2-0, and ladies and gentlemen. All right, despite all of the slander, again, Mike Tomlin, Hall of Fame coach, uh, somehow, someway has his team at 2-0. and So, uh, hey, congrats to the Steelers. They get the away, you know, the road win. So, uh Hey, Broncos, um, it might be a long season. All right, I'm not sure if y'all are, you know, Panthers bad, but uh, it's going to be a long season. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a long season. Uh, the Bengals and the Chiefs can literally do, can't, they just can't do anything in this era, but have like classic matchups. Like it's an ESPN instant classic word to the old NCAA football games every time the Chiefs and the Bengals link up. Like they cannot have a bad game. It's going to be a banger every single time. They out here hooping like Andrade and Carmelo Hayes. I, it's, it's crazy. I, it's crazy. No matter how like down in the dumps the Bengals are as they do fall to 0-2 for the season and the Chiefs go to 2-0, as the Chiefs get the game winner, shout out to Henderson Butker. Um, very controversial individual, but the boy can kick. All right? <laughs> the boy can kick. But, uh, yeah, no matter what, the Chiefs, no matter the form, and them in the sense he just have like a special, 
I don't know if it's like a Mahomes, Burrow, top QBs, the air thing, or what it is, but they just seem to always deliver, and they delivered once again. The Bengals did hop on. They were leading at halftime, but the Chiefs, once again, um, they just, again, championship DNA, clutch team, whatever you want to call it, favored by God himself, or whatever deity you pray to. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, the Chiefs got it. Um, and yeah, Bucker hits that 51-yarder. Nearly went for a 70-yarder at one point in time in this game. But, uh... He had a great game. Mahomes did throw two picks. All right, so not the cleanest start for for Patty this you know early in the season. Two wins, but uh, yeah, he hasn't been too polished. So uh, got some stuff to clean up. Pancheo had twenty. Rasheed Rice um, has looked like he's made some strides. Of course, you know he had the DUI um, earlier in the off season, and you know caught a lot of flack for that. But it does appear that he made himself to a field and he is looking like he could be that number one receiver that the Chiefs need. Um X didn't kill anybody this week. All right. He didn't butcher anybody. Godspeed didn't go crazy. But it did not matter because the Chiefs, again, just find ways to win big games. That is what made this team so so special. And we've gone over many, many times. And again, since he played a very, very tight game. Uh Burrow was better this week, not completely, you know, finest Joe Burrow form, but a little bit better. I think the run game lacking the way that it did. Um, Zach Moss led the team with 34 yards on 12 carries, which is obviously not good. 2.8 a carry. So that's, I mean, again, that's that's going to be rough for you, you know, no matter how you look at it. Jamar Chase was held in check all game. Um, it's been a very frustrating start to the season for him. Trey Hendrickson had two sacks, and it was just causing havoc, especially in that fourth quarter. But like I said, man. Favored by the Lord, favored by whoever, but the Kansas City Chiefs are the best team in the world until somebody says otherwise. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached roundup. Yes, we have reached the roundup. So let's talk racing, boys. Baku, all right, the Baku Grand Prix. Now, y'all can say Oscar got gift wrapped at his first win, but y'all can't say nothing now. Y'all can't say nada, nada, all right, a masterclass. A masterclass. And it's very ironic coming off the fact that, you know, McLaren this week, we're all like, you know what? We're choosing Lando. All right. We're going to, Oscar's going to focus on, you know, trying to get Lando the championship. And then Lando goes out in Q1 and Oscar goes and wins the race. And not just like it was gear wrapped. Like I said, he won this over Charles. Now, to be fair, McLaren had the better car. And I don't know what is wrong with that Ferrari on hards, but it was not it. But made the pass and then defended Charles Leclerc. Charles for the entire remaining the entire remainder of the race and then when Charles you know tires were about to fall off gapped him a very I mean one of the best drives of the year honestly um and why a lot of people are saying Oscar could be a world driver champion one day he could be a WDC he could be I wouldn't be surprised all right. He's got that type of upside. He can be one of the best. If he's not already one of the best drivers in the world, a lot of people are like, yo, the one thing he has to do is learn how to manage those tires. He did it perfectly at Baku, one of the most impressive drives of the year. And he fends off Charles and gets that second one of his career. And this one, this one counts for sure. No, no, no asterisk. No, Lado gave it to him. He won this one. All right. He won this one in full. So shout out to Oscar. Charles did get second, um, and it should have been a Ferrari 2-3, but um, so uh, Checo and Carlos were uh, battling it out, of course, Charles trying to fend off Checo, who was having a great drive this week, it was opposite week, all of the normal winners, Franco beat out Alex, Checo out qualified Max, it was just, it was a weird one, alright, it was a weird one, but Checo, having a much better day than Max, um, he always tends to go do well at Baku, this is one of his tracks. Um, that kind of got him the name King of the Streets, but uh, he was cooking up. Charles was spinning him off. Um, Charles with some great defense. Carlos is able to take advantage. She gets over, and he's on the outside lane. He, you know, concedes the place to Charles, so he goes on. So they got the two three, but Checo still has a lot of momentum. He still has DRS. He pulls up beside Carlos. And honestly, it was a racing incident. I don't think there was any kind of malintent, even though Carlos was very confused and Checo was upset. But uh, I think just both of their racing lines converged. It just seems like they kind of went like that. Unfortunately, went into the wall. And it's oh, really unfortunate for, for two really good days. One that coming really special for Ferrari, um, even though they lost the race. But also for Checo having a really, I mean, needed a race like this. 
and for it to end like that, you know, it is really, really rough. Um, so yeah, unfortunate for Checo and Carlos, but yeah, just a racing incident. And of course, another classic George Russell podium, picking up the pieces. People call him Mr. Saturday. They need to call him Mr. Right Place, all right? Because he is always in the right place to pick up these podiums. So yeah, shout out to George for getting it done. McLaren also passes Red Bull for the constructors. First time that's not been in Red Bull's hands in a long time. And McLaren would have to be the favorite with the way that that Red Bull car looks right now. Also, um, Adrian Newey going to Aston Martin. So, yeah, Red Bull just taking L's. All right, just a really bad week for him. Um, Franco and Ollie did well. Shout out to the rookies. They both got points. Williams got a 7-8. So, uh, yeah, good week for the young guns. All right, very, very good week for the young guns in racing. And it's not done because in NASCAR in the Xfinity Series, there's been this rumblings of this Connor Zilicic kid who was just dominating Arca right now. I mean, dominating Arca. And he was making his Xfinity debut at Watkins Glen, which is not an easy track to make your debut as a traditional quote-unquote NASCAR driver, you know, a guy that drives the ovals, you know. Um, and Connor went out there and smoked everybody. I ain't even gonna lie to you, smoked everybody. Put the entire field in a pack. Now, there was some controversy at the end of the race. I'm not sure about what. But Zilich looks every bit like the next one he is being hyped up to be. A incredible statement-making win for Connor. Um, so, yeah, just a great week for the future of driving. All right, just a great, great week. Zilich kills. Piastri kills. Good week, man. Good week. Let's talk about the W real quick. All right, nothing too crazy. But some records did fall, so we got to talk about them. Caitlin broke the single season assist record. Asia broke the single season points record. So congrats to those two first team all W players. Um, the FIFA are on a losing streak for the first time in a while. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily because you know the big dude's been playing bad. I think they just you know they ain't, they ain't elite yet. All right, as good as they were uh, post Olympics, they ain't elite yet. All right, getting there, but not yet. But Caitlin does break that assist record. Um, so yeah, Dijonet was correct. All right, she's going to lead the league in assists. She breaks Alyssa Thomas's record from last year. And of course, Asia is having her own very historic season. So yeah, she breaks the points record. I think she's about to catch uh, Angel for the rebounds record. So yeah, just an insane season for the MVP. Um, and yeah, it should be undisputed this year. Should be undisputed. Um, and lastly, Champions League is back. And Lamine Yamal is just going crazy, okay? Yamal cannot be stopped in Barcelona right now. He is on a rampage. The 17-year-old is, I'm going to be honest, the best teenager I think we've seen since Mbappe. Okay? Now, we can argue about who's better, but at this stage, the best teenager we've seen since Mbappe. Because, uh, yeah, he's just, he's been world class. World class. That's the only way to put it. He has been world class. One of the best attackers currently in form in the world. Only at 17. He just he, you feel the danger when the ball is at his feet and what he can do. He's been making magic. So yeah. Lamezia continues to be the superstar factory and Lamine Yamal looks every bit like I mean he's about to win the golden boy. He looks like the superstar next one for Barcelona. Um Erling Holland is looking like the best player in the world again. So um Back in the discussion. Now, Mbappe did score. Again, Real Madrid are currently penalty merchants until they figure out their chemistry. But, uh, yeah, Holland cannot stop scoring. He's back, all right? He's back. You know, had the injury earlier this year. Then he had the buy around of form. He was getting shut down. But he is back to dominating. So, yes, the machine is back. Okay, Holland is fully functional, and he is terminating everybody that Man City faces. So, yeah, Holland on a rampage, Jamal on a rampage, and the Young Gunks cooking up in the racing game. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed. But that is it for episode 215. Ocho, signing off.